हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू एपिसोड एट ऑफ मेडिसिन पीवाई की टॉपिक सीरीज द टॉपिक आई हैव चोजन इज पी एन एच दैट इज पेरोक्सिमल नॉक्चरल हेमोग्लोबिन यूरिया सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो द पीवाई की क्वेश्चन विच केम इन 2019 इज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज ट्रू अबाउट पेरोक्सिमल नॉक्चरल हेमोग्लोबिन यूरिया दैट इज पी एन एच सो दीज आर द ऑप्शन इनहेरिटेड डिफेक्ट इन पीगाजीन एक्स्ट्रा वास्कुलर हेमोलाइसिस डेफिशियंसी ऑफ सी डी फिफ्टी फाइव एंड सी डी फिफ्टी नाइन एंड माइक्रोसाइटिक एनीमिया and we have to choose the statement which is correct regarding pnh so to answer such type of questions you have to have a thorough idea of the topic because you need to know each and every fact of this topic so let us first discuss what pnh is all about and then we'll come back to this question so it becomes easy so let's get started so pnh uh, it is a hemolytic anemia it is the only acquired intracorpuscular defect and is also the most common cause of acquired intravascular hemolysis so i have kept the classification hemolytic anemia on the side so that you can spot where pnh belongs to basically hemolytic anemias are uh, broadly classified into intracorpuscular defect and extracorpuscular defect also hereditary defect and acquired defect where pnh falls under acquired intracorpuscular defect which is a potential question so you have to keep this in mind there are certain proteins which are involved in pnh that is cd55 that is uh, dk accelerating factor cd59 that is membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis and c8 binding protein of all these three proteins cd59 is the most important so let us discuss the pathogenesis so it becomes more clear so the pathogenesis in the normal rbcs piga gene is present on x chromosome which is encoding gpi anchor proteins that is cd55 and cd59 and they are present on the rbc membrane and they are preventing the mac attack and decreasing the complement activity so this is the normal phenomenon which is happening and protecting the rbcs but what happens in pnh is there happens a piga gene mutation which is acquired uh, which leads to ultimately fall in gpi proteins causing fall in cd55 and cd59 on the rbc membrane thus it increases susceptibility to complement system attack and intravascular hemolysis uh, so this is the main mechanism happening in pnh where these proteins fall in number and the susceptibility to complement system increases again this image depicts the impaired production of rbcs in pnh uh, where the gene is affected and pnh are red blood cells are more prone to uh, hemolysis this is the complement system where all this c3 c5 these are converting ultimately forming the membrane attack complex and this is not able to attack the normal rbcs because of the uh, gpi anchor proteins but in pnh rbcs as we discussed cd55 and 59 are reduced in number so it is more prone to attack by the mac complex coming to clinical features a uh, patient presents with pancytopenia nocturnal hemoglobinuria this is a important finding uh, when patient sleep the ph falls and the complement activity increases uh, causing more hemolysis and uh, patient presents with early morning uh, dark colored urine and also uh, there is abdominal pain fatigue shortness of breath uh, difficulty swallowing then thrombosis this is a very important finding found in pnh uh, particularly burchiari syndrome and also the most common cause of death in pnh then about 25% pnh cases may progress to aplastic anemia and also myelodysplastic syndrome so if we see triad of pnh it is pancytopenia nocturnal hemoglobinuria and thrombosis if these are present in the clinical stem your diagnosis is clear cut to pnh and you should uh, be thinking pnh in the background coming to the diagnosis uh, the hemoglobin tc and platelets they all fall hence pancytopenia then hypercellular bone marrow is noted and the nap score it is reduced then other tests like hams test acidified serum lysis test sucrose lysis test these are older tests which were done and the gold standard test for pnh is the uh, flow cytometric evaluation of rbc membrane proteins so this is a picture of flow cytometry and this could be a very important image based question which can be given in the exam maybe as a pathology question or a medicine question and this is very easy to read if you can understand how to interpret this so let us learn to interpret this flow cytometry on the left hand side which is the normal part and on the right hand side it is the abnormal plot so we need to consider this as a y axis and this as a x axis and this to be the zero so anything which will be nearer to the zero will be less and anything away from the zero will be more positive and if we consider this as a quadrant so 1 2 3 4 <laughs> and again 1 2 3 4 <laughs> so there are four quadrants so anything on quadrant 2 will be positive both on x axis and y axis anything on quadrant 4 will be negative both on x axis and y axis anything on 
quadrant 1 will be positive for y axis but will be negative for x axis similarly on quadrant 3 it will be positive for x axis and negative for y axis so cd55 is plotted on x and cd59 is plotted on y now if we concentrate on quadrant 2 where the scatter is both cd55 and cd59 are positive this is the normal condition now if you see the image on the right hand side that is the pnh the greater scatter is on the fourth quadrant and the smaller scatter is on the second quadrant so cd55 on x axis and cd59 on the y axis now if you interpret this image the scatter is more on the fourth quadrant that is it is negative for both cd59 and cd55 although there are some scatter present in the second quadrant that means some amount of cd55 and 59 are present but larger amount is absent that is there is deficiency of cd59 and 59 which is the case in pnh so i hope now you can interpret this flow cytometry if it comes in the exam and you just need to divide it into x axis and y axis and the four quadrants and have to plot where the larger scatter is and what is positive and what is negative and then it becomes very simple coming to the last part that is a treatment there are, there are two options the best option is always stem cell transplant but there's also a drug which can be used in pnh that is eculizumab and the mechanism of action of eculizumab it is inhibiting the splitting of c5 complement into c5a and c5b that is ultimately preventing the formation of the membrane attack complex that is the mac and reducing the mac activity and decreasing the chances of hemolysis so let us go back to the question so which of the following is true about paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria now we know it is not an inherited defect it is a acquired defect so the option a is wrong although piga gene is right but the option a it inherited it is not inherited it is acquired uh, option b extravascular hemolysis now we know it is an intravascular hemolysis uh, deficiency of cd55 and cd59 this looks okay uh, number D, microcytic anemia. No, we do not get no microcytic anemia. We get normocytic anemia. So the option which is correct here is C, that is deficiency of CD55 and CD59. So I hope this video was useful and I hope you are studying well, revising well, solving a lot of MCQs every day. So keep studying. I'll see you in the next episode. Till then, cheers.